The goal of our fall tour was simple. We planned to sample some of the greatest walleye fisheries Manitoba has to offer. We decided to split our fishing into two main regions, the north and the south. While there are many trophy walleye fisheries in southern Manitoba, we decided to focus specifically on legendary Lake Winnipeg and its tributaries for this part of the tour. Our first stop was planned for the Red River, but due to the crazy amount of rain this fall, the Red became completely unfishable. That turned our focus 100% to the Pine Falls area. We made it to the town of Pine Falls. We're here to pick up our co-host. And also this is where we're staying tonight. It's Paper Town Inn. It's pretty much the hub for fishermen here. I see a couple other boats in the parking lot over there. Yeah, anyways, we're gonna go find uh, Johnny and we're gonna get loaded up and fish in a blizzard. Everybody say hi to Johnny. Hi to Johnny. Johnny's first time, actually not Johnny's first time on the vlog because if you guys watch the KBI videos, Johnny won. What's, what's happened since your last win? Just not, not much, just living the dream. Who should I fish with the Pine Falls? I thought, there's probably nobody better than Johnny. Johnny uh, says he's gonna show me some of the secrets, some of the Jig and Minnow secrets of Pine Falls. And uh, this is probably gonna end off our open water season. All right, to the launch. The Winnipeg River flows 235 kilometers, starting at the Norman Dam in Kenora, Ontario, and seven dams later, eventually flowing into Lake Winnipeg at Pine Falls. While there's a river section and a lake section, this gives two great options for walleye fishermen in the area. Not too busy at the boat launch here. That's the beauty of late season. Something you do need to be aware of is wet boat launches because when you pull your trailer out, you leave a stream of water and this can turn into ice. When you're ice fishing in like minus two, it's not that bad. When you're fishing in a boat in minus two, it is like, it's, it's a little bit crazy. I apologize in advance for the poor audio, but we're gonna go where we need to go to catch the fish. Hey Johnny, you're the guide today. I'm not the guide. River or lake? That way? How far are we going? Far. Try to spear some waves today. We're gonna put this camera away because it's probably gonna get soaked and uh, we'll see you when we're out on the ocean. Welcome back. We're fishing, what is this? Just a point sticking out with a current break? Yeah, just a, just a channel edge. Channel edge. We'll see what we can do. And another thing, if you're not wearing a life jacket, you should be wearing a life jacket all the time. But if you're not wearing a life jacket this time of year, you are, you're pretty dumb because it doesn't matter how good of a swimmer you are, your body will lock up, especially wearing all this heavy winter gear. Wear a life jacket, wear your kill cord. This is end times, water's icy. You can't survive too long in the water. There's one. It's big too, isn't it? Big, suspended. I've caught a lot of sturgeon here too, on this spot. Really? Yeah. Do people get, people get big sturgeon here sometimes, oh, yeah. eh? Oh. That, that looks okay. Doesn't feel big. First walleye, Johnny's calling it little. That's <laughs> not little. <laughs> That's not small. <laughs> nice. Keep in mind, Johnny's a fish snob. So this is a big walleye. Show me what we got. First walleye. There we go. <laughs> Tour is off to a good start. What do you think, 27? Yeah, he's probably at least 22. Yeah, 27. 27, first bite. There we go. Get him back. Nice. <laughs> nice, first one. So as you can tell, that is a very different looking walleye than our northern tour. And that is a greenback walleye. And that is what this area is known for. Why do you think they're green? Anytime the water is cloudier, the fish are always lighter colored. And I think yeah. it has something to do with whatever's in the water here. Yeah. So, so that, that might be why they have the green color. It's that limestone in the, in the lake, but uh, pretty neat looking fish. And that was the first one. So we were just about to move. We might stay a little bit longer now. So can we run all this if we want to go up, like run until that rocky point? Yep. Oh, Johnny's on. Well, that's actually not terrible. Are we netting him? You boat slinging him? Boat slinging him. Number two, I think we're going to move though. Yeah, not, not a bad fish, you know. But that's like an average? Yeah, fall average, fish. probably a 21 something-ish. Nice. Nice eater. But not today. <laughs> all right, Johnny says we're going to pound some more waves to go further out, so. Not bad start. While we were nice and sheltered in the river and had caught some good fish, Johnny told us we needed to head to the main lake. So after pounding some waves, we made it out there. That's ice, ice everywhere. <laughs> we broke some waves, Johnny's just laughing at me. He just back into the wind. I mean, there are some times that like a windshield now would be one of them. We're just uh, fishing off this big rock pile here. Robinson's Rock. Robinson's Rock, giving away the hot spot. Johnny has no secrets. Johnny's on. Oh my goodness. 
Oh, that might, that's a nice fish. Number three. All right, Johnny. We just got to the spot and... Yeah, it's super thick. Probably, I don't know, 23, 24 inch fish, maybe a bit more. They're so clean. Like and just that, look at that back. Minnow, are they mostly eating shiners or what's their main forage? I think they're eating whatever uh, whatever swims by. Minnows, well, tulipies, white Some fish, jigs. Jigs, yeah. <laughs> A little update for you guys at home. Uh, we're catching fish, probably caught four off the spot maybe. We're gonna keep moving out to the big lake. We're gonna probably fish this a little bit longer yet and uh, see if we can get a bigger one, but we're filling the live well. Oh. That jig got chomped. All right, there we go. They call this lake the Big Windy. As you can see why. And uh, this is why people come from all over for this phenomenal walleye fishing. Um, and right now these are a little different conditions than normally. The water is raging. Water levels are kind of high all across Manitoba, Northwest Ontario. A lot of these tributaries, when there is a lot of current, it draws in even more fish, so. What are we thinking for jig selection? I think, uh, pink. pink and orange. And what do you look for uh, hook-wise? Uh, something with a good hook. Heavy Some, gauge. Something with the right eye. Yeah. You know, the yellow eye. That's key. And we are barbless in Manitoba. You don't really lose that many fish because of being barbless. And it helps a lot when you get hooked in the hand. Helps a lot for catch and release. And when you get hooked in your clothing. But we're going to put this back on the tripod. And my hands are just frozen. We're kind of dumb to be out here. As we proceeded to move further out into Traverse Bay, there was not a boat around to be found. We had it all to ourselves. We spot locked on a 17 foot flat right on the edge of the river channel as it flattened out into the bay. And we stayed there for the next few hours and just crushed the walleyes. We're in the middle of a snowstorm right now. Still catching fish. Snow, snow, more snow, ice. Like, look at that. We got snow drifts building up the back of our boat, but we've been crushing the walleyes. We're just making small moves. We've only fished like three spots today. Uh, we're moving again, and we're just waiting for one bite with lots of medium-sized fish in the middle, so life's good, other than not being able to feel my hands. I think this is gonna be a big walleye. Oh, that's big. Oh, it's big. I missed it. Johnny, <laughs> Johnny, oh, oh, oh. There we go. <laughs> nice. That was a disaster. Look, look at the Not color that long. Out, yeah, look how green that is. Oh, that's a fatty. Okay, I'm gonna trade you. He's not that long. He's just so fat. Look at that. Perfect fish though. Fat. That is stunning. Stunning right there. Probably 26, 27. 27. Another 27 incher, but look at that fish. That fish has to be eight, nine pounds. Yeah, amazing, amazing. Going back. Nice. This is, we're making memories today, guys. Okay, but on a serious note, oh, I'm gonna fall. Can you, can you share a little insight on your thoughts on wind and what, how to fish the wind of pine falls? Uh, just pick the days that aren't too windy to get out. Not like this? No, this is perfect. And the days that are uh, west and north are always better. You have south go further west, because the fish pull out. So further out to the lake? Further out to the lake. They go out around Elk Island and Devils and all the stuff out there. That makes sense. So basically what Johnny was saying is, yeah, the wind is pumping 
towards Pine Falls into the current and that's slowing down the current and that's bringing the fish tighter in. If the wind was blowing out, it'd be not stopping the current, fish would be further into the lake. I hope that makes sense. I use the Weather Network app all the time to check, you know, forecasts and hourly updates. But the other app I use a ton is called Wind Finder. It gives you like an overlay on the map with how that wind looks, how it's swirling, and it's a way better way to visualize how that's gonna affect your fishing spots. And you talk to any really good angler such as Johnny and wind is such a key part of their game. Um, yeah, we're gonna keep fishing. We got like an hour or two left today. And... That first day we probably caught between 60 and 80 walleyes. There was not much of any lulls throughout the day. And after not greenback walleye fishing for a while and then coming back to them, I'm just taken aback by how incredible that green color is. That green emerald sheen along their backs. It is truly like no other walleye out there and it's, it's such a cool thing that is so uniquely Manitoba. Is that one of the colder days you fish? <laughs> you can hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Guys, that was a pretty hardcore day, but we caught a lot of walleyes. And that's the amazing part. This is like an hour from Winnipeg and you can just crush greenbacks. And I feel kind of like an idiot because I fished the Red River for so many years and heard about Pine Falls, and this is actually my first time walleye fishing a Pine Falls. My first time, first day today. This boat is just trashed. We'll, we'll take a look at that, but uh, what I did was I opened all the compartments just to make sure they're free for later because those things can get completely locked up. I'll show you guys some of the icicles that formed on this boat. That's pretty sweet. The Alumacraft did well. Johnny told me this is the place to stay. Paper Town Inn? It is. It's a lot of food for you, Johnny. Wait till they send mine out. <laughs> I would highly recommend the food. I'm now gonna pass out. We will see you guys in the morning. Oh, this room smells like fish. It smells like minnows. <laughs> smells like minnow scales. <laughs> That's because of us. The room was perfectly clean when we came here. Well, Paper Town Inn, thank you. It's fantastic. We are five minutes from the boat launch. Had a great sleep. Ate a lot of food, ate a lot of breakfast. So we're feeling rejuvenated. We got one more day. This is probably Probably gonna be my last day of open water fishing. I can't guarantee it, but uh, minus 10 it was overnight. Our boat turned into an icicle, popsicle, ice cube, whatever you wanna call it. But the manager here, Trista, said I'm gonna help you guys out. She called around town and she found a friend, Melissa, who was willing to let us thaw the Alumacraft out. So look at this, icicle free. It's already snowing in here, but we're off to a great start. The goal simple, catch a big walleye. We crushed them yesterday. Kind of bounced around spots a bit. I think our favorite spot was probably the last spot we jigged. So we're gonna head straight there. Hopefully don't get soaked on the way. And uh, I think this is gonna wrap up, uh, wrap up the walleye season. All right guys, before we launch, we needed to have a little chat about invasive species. These are the bad things that exist in some of our waterways. Uh, I would say for this area, this is kind of the, the hot topic, the big one, the zebra mussels. The zebra mussels are in the Great Lakes. They completely change the ecosystem. They're not good. And they're in the Lake Winnipeg watershed, Red River, Winnipeg River here. Um, there are check stops open where you can get your boat cleaned. They essentially clean your boat with really hot water, flush it out. That's one of the easiest ways. One of the other ways is you can let your boat freeze for a certain number of days. Check online, I'll, I'll attach a link below for the exact list of the different ways to clean your boat. Make sure you check off one of those things because otherwise you could be part of the spread and you can literally change a complete ecosystem. I think it's like a $300 fine for not having your, your plug pulled if you, uh, if you get stopped. So something really easy to be aware of. We all gotta do our part. We're gonna go walleye fishing. Johnny O'Connor. So guys, when you're fishing in extreme cold, it's a couple things to be aware of. If you don't have a warm garage to drain and thaw everything out in, 
you want to drain the water when you get to the launch at the end of the night. I didn't show that, but we actually ran the motor for a couple seconds, ran the pumps, got rid of all that water. Right now, the first thing I'm gonna check for in the morning is to make sure that my motor's peeing water. See that right there? That's good. We're good. That's kind of the biggest thing to watch for when you're doing crazy late season fishing. If that's not pumping water, you've probably got an issue. Sometimes you can idle around, wait for it to clear up. Sometimes you just should probably not be fishing if it doesn't clear up. But anyways, I'm gonna get bundled up a little more, throw on my life jacket, and we're gonna go fishing. All right, how far, how many miles out, Johnny? Uh, 25. 25 miles out. We are headed to the other side of the lake. No, it should be a little less windy. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get a little bit further and we will see you guys once we're jigging. Johnny's hooked up. I don't think it's giant. Oh, that's Not nice. Bad. Awesome. Good fish. Well, you've been fishing for about 20 minutes and uh, <laughs> this one's still aggressive. Yeah, beautiful green though. They're getting thick for the winter time. Put it back. A little too big to eat. <laughs> Guys, I wish we had some secret techniques, but we don't. So probably the biggest thing I've learned now fishing in Pine Falls, and this is like the biggest contrasting difference from the northern swing of this walleye tour is uh, there's no spot on a spot here. It's general areas. When we were up north, it was like very specific rock to mud transitions on the side of reefs. Here, it's like massive big mud flats. It's, it's more so paying attention to the current, to the wind, and because these fish are all moving and you're looking for the highway where they're coming in, moving out, and yeah, you can't just like bank on a waypoint being good. You kind of just got to fish around and be confident that the fish are going to come to you sometimes because sometimes it takes a little bit. So and one thing I noticed, Jay, after we came, we moved a little bit further north uh, on the south side, the wind's kind of blowing from that direction this way. We didn't have any current over there, but we have a lot more current here. Oh yeah. Compared to the other spot. We didn't move that far, just a few hundred yards. So totally. I'll zoom out. Is, uh, hopefully this is better. This is where it's coming out to. The, that's the river over there. Here with the lake and pretty much Johnny's saying is that current is staying on that side on the eastern bank because the wind is pushing that current in. So it's all about how that wind is going to push the current different ways. But uh, does that make sense, Johnny? I think that makes sense. All right, jigging minnow time. Oh, what do we uh, got, Johnny? Really nice That's more like it. We're on him, Johnny. I don't know. I think it'll be close. That's a good fish. Show me the fish first. That's a long fish, not as fat as the last one. No, definitely a little bit skinnier, but that's some of them are like that. Look at here. the head on that thing. All right, let's throw on the tape. 28 is the Manitoba Master Angler. Yeah, it's over on that side. 28. Boom. That is such a nice fish. <laughs> and they get bigger. Yeah, like it's not a heavy one, but it's still a beautiful fish. Nice, buddy. There you go. Catch all the big ones. <laughs> I'll let you reel in the next one. Next one's for me. Okay, so we're just talking jigs, and uh, I like this shape for in the current, because it seems like it tracks straight, yeah. doesn't spin, and uh, I don't know, just makes me feel better when I put it on, because I know it's gonna catch something. <laughs> there you go. I've been using also a kind of a narrow profile jig. Um, cuts the current, you can see, one more narrow profile. We've also been using some with uh, flasher blades. That's, that's kind of the same thing. It's got a keel, so it tracks straight in the current. Got a little blade on the bottom. Uh, these ones have a little bit better hook, which is important so you don't straighten it out. Yeah. But uh, I don't know, anything with bright color. I like two-tone, anything with contrast, but this one's a solid. It seems like it's been yeah. working today. It's dirty water. Even though it is like clear by Pine Fall standards, it's dirty. Uh, strong hook is the most important. You're dealing with current. You're dealing with ferocious greenback head shakes and uh, yeah the, the last thing you want is to bend out your hook so that's a little bit on our jig selection uh, probably more important than all that is fresh bait good minnows here we've got some salties there's a shiner minnow that is what these fish are feeding on that's what they're coming into and following around in the fall time 
Talk about rods, Johnny. What are you using? What do you like? I've got, uh, this is a 6.8 medium. I like a 6.8 or 7 out here. I'm running five pound braid in the current because I wow. like five pound braid for everything. That's light. But uh, it, yeah, it goes in the current well and I can feel when these dead minnows uh, start coming back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny also has broken off more than me. I've been using 10 pound braid, seven and a half foot medium light. Um, whatever it is, guys, you don't need to complicate it. It's uh, Oh, 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 Johnny, that looks big. Is it big? It feels not bad. I think it's giant. But... Am I netting? I think so. Oh, that's a pretty long one. Wow. So you're telling me what the rod you like. It seems to work okay. Yeah, the five pound braid's fine. It works. I take everything back, I said. Everyone. Yeah, just another, I don't know, 24, 25, maybe a bit more. We've had a lot of those today. Yeah, nice fish. Nice. Alrighty. Oh, you forgot the cheeks. We got lots of cheeks for today, but we'll be fine. <laughs> So I just set the hook. I haven't seen this fish yet, but I think it's not small. Well, that's that's pretty good. That's pretty big, Jay. I'm gonna net it. I got this, Johnny. The net's frozen. <laughs> oh, ah! You got him. Nice. That's a pretty fat fish. That's a, that's a good one. Oh, <laughs> that fish is a little fatty. So tall. Like, just, this is one of the best walleye fisheries in North America, without a doubt. And uh, yeah, I don't know how many walleyes we've caught this size today, but amazing. We weighed the fish off camera, took a picture, just over eight pounds, guys. These fish are just built like super tankers. Like, that is why you come here, eight pound walleye. There she goes. That is why we have such a good fishery. I cannot stress enough about catch and release. Eat those. 15 to 20 inch walleyes, put the big breeders back and we'll have enough for everybody to share. Thanks to my buddy Johnny for showing me the ropes. And I, I think we are actually done now. That is a wrap. The tour is over. The whole south basin of Lake Winnipeg is just loaded with walleyes. I know there's a lot in the north basin as well, which we are yet to explore. But uh, yeah, if the Red River wasn't blown out, that would have been another stop on this tour. But uh, Pine Falls showed its true colors. For my first time, I feel like an idiot that I've never fished here before, but I will definitely be back. Our fall walleye tour had come to an end. Between the north and the south, that was just a small showcase of some of the incredible walleye fishing in Manitoba. We had caught some big fish, lots of fish, seen some amazing sights, visited some awesome lodges. And now it's time to put the boat away, get ready for ice. <laughs>